Hey folks, welcome back. It is Lucid and we are jumping back into the tournament finals. It's turn 42 and uh, yeah, so what happened in the last episode? Well, uh, we had a pretty major fight between Yes and Vanarus and uh, Vanarus was really the first person to bloody uh, to bloody Yes up. And uh, we get a message here from Vanheim, just to ex explain some stuff that's been happening from my perspective a bit. So this is great, by the way. This one of the we haven't gotten a ton of messages from Vanheim. So uh, let's see what he has to say. I've been wanting to join in the fight against Yes for a while now. The reason I attacked Ohm was because I was afraid of getting a uh, pincher attacked by Ohm and Yes the second I got tangled up with Yes. I figured out. Um, I figured if I take. Uh, out Ulm first with Jotunheim. It would be a quick war considering his losses to Pythium, uh, and then I could move on to Yes. However, End isn't playing ball. Despite the obvious move here to team up against Yes, uh, he's deciding to, that fighting me is more important. <laughs> to me, this is funny a little bit. Um, I was hoping uh, I could use these two major victories against him to negotiate peace. Uh, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen uh, since he's stuck on the idea of invading me. <laughs> that's also interesting. This effectively means we're both going to lose. Yes will, yes will swallow Vanarus and then he'll swallow me while uh, End dicks around. Anything can happen, but uh, I think anyone realizes this game is over. Everyone realizes. Yeah, this is a pretty bad <laughs> diplomatic situation. Um... Yeah, it is surprising that Int doesn't want to go back to peace. I think there's every incentive in the world for Int to go back to peace. Uh, what it would probably mean if Int peaced out with Vanheim is it would then open, it would basically put Ulm back into a 2v1, which honestly is not a bad way for things to go because you basically have three powers who, you know, Vanheim can kind of attack the Satis area. Um, but Jotunheim can't really attack uh, Ulm. I mean, yes, that much. They could kind of do it. Anyway, this might be okay. This would probably be... Them making peace would probably be good for the reasons Vanheim's indicating. That, you know, N could go mess with Yes. Um, but uh, the attacking of Ulm uh, basically stripped away Ulm's ability... Well, I don't know. Ulm probably wasn't going to get much of Pythium anyway. But it definitely... It definitely created a lot of chaos in which it was very difficult for a coalition to form. That said, if they did quickly conquer, and, and that's, I think, one of these things, like, what's the right move to make diplomatically? I think it's important to understand that, um, oh, Vanarus puts up a global. I think this is Sea of Ice. Uh, I think it's important to, uh, to appreciate that it may have been a good idea to attack Ulm. Um, but you have to know, like, knowing how the war is going to play out is complicated. So if it doesn't close out quickly, then it may not be a great deal after all, because there's this huge unfinished mess that's causing a huge distraction that's going to keep everybody from dealing with yes. Um, the This global has been made possible uh, with the help of donations from Ulm, Vanheim, and, and Jotunheim. Uh, yes has the path access on their pretender to cast a spell, but guessing how many uh, gems are in the global will not be easy. Okay, so Vanheim and Jotunheim... Um, basically everybody but what? Bandar Log? Okay, so I mean, I think this is everybody contributing some. Um, yeah. Uh, but guessing how many gems in the global will not be easily. Uh, hopefully this is, will flush a lot of pearls uh, before dislodging it successfully. In any case, uh, this is not going to stay up for the long call. Yes cannot reinforce uh, with new cap mages. While it remains up, and getting Morvark Knights to the surface becomes an obnoxious process requiring pretender turns to gateway them to a safe fort somewhere. Uh, provinces along the coast that Yis could instantly reinforce from anywhere in the spawning Yisian Empire now require a lengthy trek uh, around the coast by land, since sailing is blocked. Uh, also, certain areas uh, should become incredibly vulnerable to other players um, if they ever get around to resisting Yisian victory instead of fighting each other. Uh, were we all cooperating, the land holdings of Yes would probably rapidly disappear, even if nobody would actually uh, cleanly beat the main knight stack. Uh, and even then, when Yes inevitably knocked down the global, 
It would be trying to break back out of the water with a much depleted economic base and piles of dead druid researchers. Sadly, we're a bunch of crabs in a basket, and it's easier to pinch other crabs than to pinch the crab monger. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, that's excellent. Um, Blackhawks coming through. Killing uh, a researcher. Revenida. Yis just loves this spell. The AI loves this spell, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's start off with... Uh, well, we got our first message from Vanheim. So let's start off with Vanheim. So Vanheim apparently was trying to peace out with... Uh, with End, but uh, End wasn't going to have it even after taking these uh, these huge losses. Uh, if you missed that last episode, it was in there. They had a huge fight here, and uh, End got completely crushed, completely crushed. And the main, you know, I mean, there's probably several reasons why, um, but the main reason was a very distinct lack of uh, mage support. And what's interesting is right now, not only did he lose the major battles, but he's losing the raiding war. Um. And also, he de end declared this war, right? Like, this was End's idea, and it's not going well. So, very, very, very strange that End is not uh, accepting peace terms. Um, yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't, maybe the peace terms weren't generous, but from my perspective, uh, he's losing the main army fight, he's losing the raiding war. And it's very, very, very clear he's not going to have some quick, decisive victory against Vanheim. And if he gets too tangled up, like if, let's say he gets close to Vanheim and starts taking back this stuff, in order for him to, like, go after Yis, uh, all this stuff would have to get untangled. And it's very difficult to do that once you get too heavily committed into a war. Right now, they haven't even exchanged forts. So it seems to me extremely extremely odd that yes would not accept i mean that end would not accept peace but they haven't uh and the elves continue raiding uh, i don't see anything that uh so there's some doggos here set up to capture the elves um but i don't see a ton of mages let's see what he has in turn he has a sage here he's got some piccany scholars and i forget what they get i think they're low random paths Abbot Sages. I, you know, I really don't know all the end units very well. Abbot Sages. Magus. Oh, here they are. Okay. Oh, they do have... So I was uh, misinformed in the... Misinformed just an idiot in the last episode. Um, yeah, they do have... Um, Recruit Anywhere Astral. So they really are an Astral Powerhouse. So he could have really brought... I mean, it was really disappointing that last fight. Uh, he, you know, he could have brought enough astral mages to do a lot of point buffing. Hopefully, on the doggos, uh, they are hard to buff because they're undisciplined. But you know, he could have done it on his other troops too. Uh, and if he was, you know, going to do a high finesse play, you can buff the doggos, but you have to be pretty careful about where you put things. <clears throat> But yeah, looks like he caught no strange bird. Whoops. So yeah, I I don't. This seems like a mess. Um, and then we had, and I don't want to spoil it by scrolling over the top. There was a battle in Jotunheim. Where? Oh, there's nothing in here. Jotunheim gave up his capital. He he just tried to break out the turn before with some Scrotty or something. There's nothing in here. The fuck? Oh, wait. Oh, he rode out. Okay, we missed it. So here's the ride out. Huge communion. This is like 200 slaves at least. Some bone fiends up here to distract... I think we know what this is, guys. This is massive, massive, massive bloodletting. I don't think this is going to... I mean, let's... I mean, the, the problems are obvious, right? Low protection units. But 
Blood four. This looks blood empowered. I don't. Is that possible? Maybe it's possible that with the randoms they get blood four. Well, let's see what happens. I mean, I think this just all gets blown up with evocation. There's not. There's no distraction really. So imps, which are gonna distract the back line. Okay, I'm bought in. Regeneration. The scrotty are, oh my god, it's a scrotty, it's a line of scrotty thugs. So it's just the thug line. No arrowfin though. Rigor mortis is going up. Okay, so rigor mortis is up. Oh my gosh, but the iron blizzards are just devastating here. Just carving out swaths. Meanwhile, uh, on this side, we can see the imps have jumped in and they are causing some distractions. We'll see if the... It's not... They're not dense enough. They're not juicy enough target. Okay, now they do take a few of the blade winds. Uh, and the scrotty thugs are closing in. But they die very, very, very quickly up close. I think this is a good example of, uh, this is something, okay, I, I think a mistake everybody falls into, sometimes, not everybody, a lot of people fall into, is like you, you see a guide or you see somebody use Scrotty and you're like, this is the kit for Scrotty. This is not always the kit for Scrotty. This may be the kit for Scrotty in a particular circumstance. But this is not the kit for Scrotty versus armor piercing uh, iron blizzard spam. And I, I actually was thinking about it earlier today. Uh, you know, I recorded the last episode not terribly long ago in real time. And that uh, that Nifal Jarl, which was coming in, uh, Tajits, the hero. Uh, I was thinking about it. He probably actually could have soloed the, uh, the Ulm army. The Ulm army actually has trouble... Late game Ulm actually has a lot of trouble dealing with super combatants. Um, the thing is, all of their stuff has to go through protection. Um, some of their stuff is armor piercing, but it all has to go through protection. Um, and even like these guys, like with the big nasty battle axes, and then the guardians with the you know the big nasty black halberds, you're like, okay, this is really good. <sighs> Um, I think, you know, like with weapons of sharpness, it's possible that they can just defeat almost any super combatant, but it is possible. It would have been possible to thug Tajits to kill them or to super combat them, but you have to gear them appropriately for the job. And this is the point I was making. Um, these guys are like general purpose scratty. Like this is what you would go, you know, plow into, you know, an indiscriminately large amount of PD and it's going to work. Right. But this is not going to work against Iron Blizzard. This is not going to work against Guardians, who are going to, when you get surrounded, you know, you're going to probably be taking, like, 20 damage a turn. So, in my opinion, you have to get, like, you would have to get these guys, and I, I'm not exactly sure how you, so he, he got them fluffed a bit. You know, they've got uh, Liquid Body, which is good. They've got Body Ethereal on them, which is pretty good. But these, again, aren't going to help with Iron Blizzard. You've got to get them probably upwards of probably upwards of like 30 something protection. And they need a good shield. Not this shitty ass fine shield. They need a good shield. Like a shield of valor. And they definitely need air shield. Uh, like the, the buff. So they can either have that from Arrowfend or they can have that from, like, a Shield of Valor. But, like, that's definitely what Tajit should have had. He probably should have had, like, a Flesh Eater, a Shield of Valor, more armor, like, good armor. The Bracer of Protection would have been pretty legit. Maybe a Ring of Regen. And he could have probably face-tanked all the stuff Holm was going to throw at him uh, with that. And appropriate buffing. But, um, yeah, we'll resume the battle. That's kind of one of the interesting things about Dominions. Like, you learn things that are generally good, and you have to have a pretty decent understanding of the mechanics of Dominions 
to know like okay this is like good stuff to do on scrotty these are ways to like fluff them like these are reasonably advanced kind of like game concepts um and you know there's a bajillion items and a bajillion spells and to know which ones you need on which kind of thugs generally to make them useful you know there's a lot to cover there um this is a slave let's see what the communion's looking like two slaves wailing winds is up rigor mortis is down But yeah, so same thing applies basically to these Scrotty. They weren't really, they were general purpose, but they weren't kitted up specifically for the job at hand. Um, so yeah, they get wrecked. Now that being said, you, you do want to be careful about like range and distance. These guys are on advancing cast spell. So they... You'd have to be probably really beefy to really be able to face tank all these. I'm not sure. No, Scarty probably could. But you would have to have basically kind of the perfect gear. And fluffing. I think the way you would probably do it, have two Scarty next to each other, have a fluffer behind. Uh, ideally, you have some way to get earth magic. I'm not sure how you would do that. So you can do earth buffs on them. But, uh, yeah. That did not work. So, uh, he loses 10 Gaija. Uh, he loses all of his Scrotty Thugs with all of the gems invested on it. And then, uh, yeah, all of this. This represents in many ways the death of, of Jotunheim. I don't think this is something you can recover from, uh, especially losing the cap. Now, Alm has not really... Um, killed much of Jotunheim. There's still a lot of Jotun stuff, right? Like a lot of forts. So he's now got to figure out how he's going to go get it all. But Jotunheim's basically, he's decapitated them. Uh, not just by taking their capital, but um, by killing this all these mages, like these, you know, the losses from Jotunheim are, are basically irrecoverable. Um, so yeah, I think he just goes around and figures out the most efficient way maybe he splits the army up now into two but maybe that's a little risky maybe he just comes down here and starts taking fort after like come down here and take these three forts and let somebody else vulture these uh, and, oh man this turns open <laughs> yes might be able to get to it but anyway those those are things uh, that could happen let's see what happens over here killed some pd it doesn't look like he's caught any of the raiders uh, the Indies also attacking Ulm, getting in on the action. Yeah, Ulm's having just a hell of a time trying to catch any of these raiders over here. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting. With Jotunheim decapitated, everybody looking for these quick gains, like especially with that happening. I think if, if you're, that even puts more emphasis, like if you're in, end your nap with Jotunheim, uh, Make a nap with Vanheim. Vulture to your heart's content and prepare to go to war with Yis. Because Ulm can't take all this stuff pretty quickly, or very quickly, and he's also annoyed with how long this war is going to take. So he's probably okay with people vulturing a little bit. You know, to help him out. He's got plenty of work to do down here, too. So. Oh, man, just pure chaos in this area, though. Um... But this is this is also a thing. Like with taking Jotunheim's capital, that's um, you're you're hard committed now to 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 war to the end of one of you. You know, it's not like there's no peace terms anymore. These guys are in a death match now, so uh, that just adds to the chaos uh, and confusion in this part of the world. Um, and with that, um, we've talked a little bit about the elves. Let's go over to the other other elves. Uh, to our favorite elves, to the Vanarusian and the Yissian elves. Um, apparently, End was getting a little frisky with uh, Bandarlog's cap circle uh, and got wrecked here. What the hell happened? Oh, never mind. 
attacked in one. Oh, but they lost two. How did how did they lose this many things? There's just a tiny bit of PD. Oh, I guess it's just barbs. I guess they just got torn apart by barbs. But were they blessed? They were not blessed. I think with bark skin and twist fate, they shouldn't die to that many barbs. But uh, they did. Rip Tiger Riders. Um, over here, we have the uh, the very famous gelatinous cube. So you can do hoarder skeletons with the death gems. That's hilarious. Budget rating coming through. Okay. Losing ground. Vanarus attacks Yis here, and it looks like Yis did a small PD dump in conjunction with having a thug here. Now the problem with this for Vanaru, so oh, this Vanabog's kitted out pretty damn well. The problem is he's got this, he would definitely win a 1v1, but with the PD surrounding him, oh, he's got Soul Vortex. Ah, oh, there's no way he can lose this. There's no way, right? He's, he's fatigue neutral? How is he fatigue neutral? Oh, Soul Vortex. There's no way he loses this, right? Does he kill? Oh, she retreats. Yeah, okay. I didn't think he could lose it. Yeah, okay. So Vanarus attacked Yus in one. Um, Vanar or Yus attacking here, but there's too much PD. Uh, ten PD a lot of times will save you. This I don't even think it's ten, but yeah. Especially if you have an extra commander. Uh, I think this was maybe they were trying to do. Let's watch again. I can't remember if he was trying to do blood hunting with this guy. No, I don't know what she was there doing. She got picked off. Uh, Morgan Champion coming in here. Uh, Vanarus attacking the Gelatinous Cube. So we finally get a square fight between Gelatinous Cube and Vanarus Thug. Iron Warrior is going off turn one, and then Moss Body. And then Quickness and Soul Vortex. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure you're going to die here, whoever is on this side. Gelatinous Cube, it's fluffed up. Doesn't matter. Okay, did not kill the Druid, though, which was a little interesting. Okay. So Venerus really starting to hold the line. Um, he's definitely bloodied Yes. What we do not see is the remains of the Yisian army, and I'm not sure where they are. Because uh, there were still a lot of... Um, there were a lot of uh, Morvark Knights left over. Um, what's going to be interesting, though... Attacked. I don't know if I. This really is interesting because I don't know if Yus can reinforce well enough from the ocean to take like significant infrastructure. I mean, there's a lot of land troops, and Yus can make turn out druids and buff up the marrows and stuff. But I don't think that's going to be able to kill Vanarus. So I don't. It really matters how many Morvark knights. Um, are alive and well. We know there's probably about 50 up here in Satis, and they're definitely making their way south. Uh, probably a lot of them are on top of this fort here. Uh, but we don't know how many are, are in total. Probably, I think there's like maybe 20 down here, maybe 50 here. Maybe that's enough. But maybe not. Um, and the deep rating from Yis here, combined with the fact that Vanarus has already lost a lot, 
uh, is it's really putting a hurting on them. Um, and I think at this point, the problem is once you get like, I mean, Vanarus does not have a lot of provinces, right? He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then eight and a half, nine, right? If we count the forts as half that are sieged, not a lot of provinces, right? So not very deep pockets. Um, but, you know, coming up with an efficient counter that's going to survive Yiss's go-tos for raiding, which are Call of the Winds and Morvark Knights, uh, or, you know, like a Morgan Princess, a little tricky, right? Especially when you consider the cost of, like, potentially losing that thing. And then, the you know, Yiss is hitting you with scouts all the time to actually see what you've got. Um... But I feel like that, ha you know, it's like when you're fighting elves, you have to kind of assume they're going to attack you damn near everywhere and then try to kill all the raiders. And only when the raiders are dead do does the pressure start lightening up. Um, I, I don't know his gym situation, but I feel like probably the Vanarusian sages probably could come up with some reasonably efficient counters. But like, yes, is using very low commitment rating. Uh, which is going to kill up to 10 PD. So Vanarus needs a little bit more than like just PD to be able to hold off the low commitment rating. Um, so anyway, we'll see. Anyway, Siege Chaff moving down. Um, and I think that is about it for this turn. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. It's possible I missed something, but we will accept it. Turn 43 coming up. Message from Vanarus. Gelatinous cubes everywhere. It's a reasonable counter to Thug Raiders. They're cheap, so it doesn't hurt to lose one. Uh, and if they trample and swallow successfully even once, uh, the Thug is deleted regardless of stats, buffs, remaining hit points. Um, it's somewhat tough uh, to get that successful one against the pony pushing 30 defense. Uh, but the risk is low and the reward is high. Uh, the trick with this, though, is he does have to commit some mages. Uh, and he does have flying dudes, so he can just fly and attack rear probably if he's thinking about it. Sitting in my base and doing nothing, uh, and not doing anything, is a win for Yiss. I need to continuously be doing things. Killing Yissy and cat mages is a big win. Losing my mages is a big loss. But every turn, Yiss gets to passively soak my territory's gold and gem income. Without having to think uh, about what I'm doing is a small win for Yiss. And turn after turn, uh, those add up. Uh, I'm a couple turns from outfitting Ice Devil Thugs, which should hopefully be able to deal with the cubes um, and not immediately die to counterattacks. It's because they can't get trampled, so they don't have the swallow on trample, I don't think. I think cubes are size 4. Um, the other thing he could do to potentially avoid trampling is to enlarge his dudes, which is pretty easy for a nation with nature access. Um... I, we can actually check. I'm not totally sure what size they are. Do we have a cube somewhere? There are the cubes. They might be size 5. No, they're 4. Yeah. So just enlarging cavalry will fix it. Uh, we'll watch this battle since we're here. Okay, Will-O-Wisps. And then he's got these idiots here. I guess they're just going to zap him. Is this a werewolf? I guess it's the werewolf you get from an event, or... And yeah, these guys are here just to do lightning bolts at the cube. The will-o'-wisps causing major distractions. And then these guys on attack rear. Very nice. These druids are very tough, though. Uh, this because they've got really high protection and moss body, which are two things that go very well together. They kill. He kills a couple on his way out. Um, so he loses werewolf, which he doesn't care about, but he loses four chud herdmen, which he kind of cares about. But in terms of gold loss, uh, pretty good deal because I think there's also some gear on these guys. I can't see it from here, but uh, so gold loss seventy five. And then this guy, 160, so, you know, we're looking at 
uh, like one uh, 250 gold lost, and then plus a gelatinous cube, which is pretty cheap. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's actually kind of even, uh, but just more gems lost on the side of Yis. Um, so anyway, you know, it it's not great if you're Vanaroos, because you lost some stuff, but you get to keep your land and you inflict a little bit of damage on Yis. Uh, we'll finish reading his messages. Um... I have to continue hitting him with mana bogs best I can. If you ever lose a game sitting in your capital with a pile of stuff, ending turn after turn, uh, is not actually hurting your foe. Sitting in your forts can be good if you hope to be relieved by a coalition to get back in the game. But if there's no chance of that, uh, and you still won't fight, um, sitting in your fort... Oh, wait. Uh, and you still won't fight, you might as well let the AI take over for you. Well, yeah. Ruins games doing that. Also, fun fact. Apparently, uh, if the enemy uses raid command and you, your patrol intercepts them, retreating from that battle is death. That is true. I have experienced that before. Um, I had my indie commander in five Smeargle retreat so they wouldn't die when Yis inevitably attacked my uh, Throne of Water. But even though they made it off the field, the game still counted them as dead. Yep. That is how it works. Which I think actually is... a I think it's actually working as intended and as it should be. Otherwise, you can just raid things and there would be no, not much reprisal. You can just retreat. And the raid causes damage if they don't catch you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Morgan Princess jumps in, kills a bunch of stuff. Let's see if he kitted her out at all. Yeah, okay. Some gear. Hammer of the Mountains. Very cheap, hits very hard, so it's pretty good. At, this is pretty good anti-thug gear, because it's good, especially versus high defense thugs. Because this is just small area of effect, um, or it's on. It's an extra effect. It's not on hit, so you don't have to hit them, and then you'll stun them, and then you get to pound them in the face. So this would probably do pretty well against the Vanabogs that uh, Vanarus is using. Okay. Um, and let's go to the map now. So let's, um, well, we were talking about Vanarus, and we got messages from him, so we'll start here. Um, Morgan Princess raiding, Kamazots flying in. I'm assuming he put death gems on them and had them do horde skeletons. Pretty close, actually. A little bit more PD would have beaten this. But when you're poor, hard to do a big PD dumps. And this province is worth a lot. It's got uh, four gems. And uh, yeah, Vanaru's starting to look a lot like Yes. A few more Vark Knights and a Kamazot come in. This throne is under siege, and there's a lot of barbarian uh, horsemen. These are almost definitely Yisses from uh, oh, the Green Horde. I don't know why it's not showing it. Oh, he might have stolen them with... Uh, did he twice born them? He might have. No? I don't know why they're not, they're not showing up in the... Pretty sure it's these guys, the Green Horde. Oh well. Anyway, they're on top of this throne. Um, unfortunately, this army is now outside, and it's well. Okay, we'll finish watching the battles, but it there's an, a, a tremendous amount of pressure on Vanarus right now. Because on one hand, he has to keep up the raiding pressure. On the other hand, he's going to need to liberate some of these forts. I think this one's completely hopeless. This one, though, he needs to liberate. Um, but he can't afford to take any more losses, like army losses. And, um, yeah, just a bunch of low commitment rating from, from Yis... Uh, and some of this is Mercs, too. He's got Mercs all back up in here. Uh, Zots running around over here, flying around. 
he's just recruiting as many of these Zots as he can. And I'm sure any of the Death Gems he's got, rather than build up complicated Death Gem kind of infrastructure, he's just using them as raiders. Because Zots with Death Gems can do Horde Skeletons, which is pretty innovative. I, I don't know if I've seen that before. Okay. I've seen people do it like put one or two gems on them. But never like five gems and calling them a raider. It's kind of expensive, but it's cheaper than some of the rituals. Okay. So interesting. Um, anyway, that's basically the state of things. Uh, Vanaru's going to have to make a decision about what he tries to liberate this with. Because, you know, for all he knows, 20 more Morvarks could show up here. We we still don't have the uh, Satissian Morvarks accounted for. So we don't know where they are. Um, yeah. They could definitely come in here and reinforce. Uh, and I don't know how many mages he has inside. So, it, and you don't want to lose, like, you know, this is not like a terribly well mage reinforced army. You don't want your Chud Herdman at this point in the game marching around without enough mage support. So, we'll have to see what he does. But things are getting very, very desperate up here. Um, but anyway, everything that uh, that he said is right. You've got to strike out and make plays. You can't sit in your forts. Even though right now it's pretty clear that the writing is on the wall. Um, I think the other players have... I don't think they... I, I don't know how, how much they know. But the final... Maybe they think Sea of Ice is going to stop them. I mean, Yis probably has more land holdings than any other player has holdings on land too. I mean, he's got so much. Like, if you just look at the land portion of Yis, he's huge. And Yis has decent land stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's go look at Vanheim. So Vanheim moved from here to here. Uh, I can't remember if there was a big force from uh, from end over here, but he's looking like he wants to go for end's capital. Um, now I would advise against this. Um, if he moves the stack onto end's capital, I expect he will lose it all. Um, and this is a scary stack. We saw it fight before. It was really good. The problem though is end can you know was pretty rich. He could do a big PD dump. And uh, his capital actually has a lot of mages. And if he does a PD dump, combines the gogs in, um, and presumably shows us what research he has, I would be highly surprised if Anarus won. That's one of the main things. Like, when you go deep into attacking somebody, you're going to have to fight their whole mage core. And, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I think these guys are going to get wrecked. And his gods here, too, Bob met. So... Maybe he doubles back and goes for the throne. That would, I think, be the safer move. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't think this is going to resolve before Vanarus completely falls. And once Vanarus completely falls, uh, Yis's eyes, if he doesn't have enough thrones to win, which he might, uh, are probably going to turn south into to end. So, <laughs> I mean... I think that's the obvious target. He might vulture a little bit of Jotunheim too. I mean, the whole world's in chaos. There's just so many different things he could do, and I, I don't even know which one would be more right. Um. So anyway, that's there's some raiding going on. I don't think there were too many major fights here. Let me make sure we cover enough of it. Okay. Uh, coming to Ulm. Some Scrotty problems. Uh, he kills the Indies. Yeah, Ulm... Like, okay, he's taken Jotunheim's cap, and that's a big deal. But he's definitely not figured out the raiding solution yet. Um... Yeah, it could just be... I think he doesn't have enough money. Which is... It's the it's a vicious cycle, right? If you don't have enough money uh, to build troops, and you can't have anything to counter-raid. That's one of the reasons, I think, like, even though he took Jotunheim's cap, it's it's like a very Pyrrhic victory. Because he doesn't... 
he still doesn't have any economy. Uh, let's see if we can see his income graph. Okay, we don't have any recent findings. It would have gone up some, but not a lot. He's probably like maybe right here on income, like still very bottom of the pack. So I don't know. I think it's definitely would have been worth it for Ulm to try to peace out with Jotunheim. And this is just a disaster still. Like, and this is what I was just talking about with chaos. It, th I mean, this, this whole land is just, they've ruined each other. <laughs> it's what they've done. They have just completely ruined each other. Uh, Jotunheim and Vanheim, more Vanheim than Jotunheim, has ruined Ulm's economy. And Ulm has ruined all their armies. If he starts catching, if he has a turn where he catches like two or three of these thugs, things can start turning around from an economy perspective. But he's got to correctly anticipate where they're going to pop up, which is tricky. And especially when you only have like two squads, maybe, trying to detect them. I mean, he could look at like Black Lord thugs, maybe, that could kill Scrotty. Uh, maybe when pair, like two Black Lords with. Um, with a priest with the right weapon would uh, dismember them pretty good. Uh, but anyway, I'm not I'm not exactly sure the best way to handle it. Um, one of the things we don't really see is we don't I don't really feel the item side of Ulm yet. Like one of the things Ma Ulm is supposed to be phenomenal for is the items because they can make them all super cheap. But we don't see a lot of like budget uh, kits coming out, and part of that could be because he's got some things like an the ethereal crossbows he's got okay we see some of it oh piercers but these are not the right things to make kind of i mean they're good weapons but ideally as long you want to be making the uh the items which cost five gems total um because you get those for one if you have a hammer so anyway okay um yeah, I, you know, anyway, I'm not going to play Olm's game for him, but I feel like there's more things he could do. Um, either, you know, the mixes of the priest and the warriors running around or Black Lord thugs. Like, we can take a, we'll take a quick gander at it rather than just philosophizing. What would it take to kill this guy? He's got a vine shield, which means MR is going to be important. He's got a horror helmet, which means you've got to kill him pretty quick. Holy shitballs. Heroic toughness. Okay, this guy's a special case. Um, there's an item uh, that I think it's a morning star and it will break shields I think you probably need that actually get rid of the vine shield uh, you probably also need iron will cast on your guys which is an earth one spell so you can spam that out especially like when you're fluffing thugs like black lords uh, protection is kind of high um, and the shield, not super duper useful. So I think you just go like a weapon of sharpness. Like have a couple, like maybe one guy with the shield breaking thing. And then two guys with the big, or like three guys with big old weapons of sharpness and wearing bracers. And... Um, I'm not sure what this would be. Maybe like a uh, Ring of the Warrior would be good. Or if you don't have blood, you could do like the fire thing, the burning pearl. Get you some bonus attack because he's got really high defense. And then you have like four of them total getting buffed up by a mage. And the gem investment on them would be actually really small. Um, and you do Legions of Steel, Strength of Giants, Iron Will on them. Uh, if you're going to be super intense about it, which I don't think you would because they would get shocked by this thing. Um, you could do Iron Warriors. I mean, you could do Iron Warriors on them too, but you would have to also give them some shock resistance like Storm Spools. But these are pretty cheap. It's a little harder for them to make. But um, anyway, like I think you just do kind of budget stuff like that. Um, it, you know, like probably two or three gems per thug. And you have like four of them and they get fluffed up. And then you run them into something like this and they'll just... They should blow him up. Um, but this is pretty scary. He might take one or two of them down with him. But this is like a major investment, and he's got a ridiculous heroic trait. 
And he's going to regen just a huge amount every turn. Like 20 every turn. Let's watch what happens. Yeah, 23. Cold resistance would be nice, but if you blow him up pretty fast, it wouldn't matter. Um, anyway, he's got to figure out what he's going to do. I, I'd be pretty careful. Like, these guys probably would kill him, but a little tricky. We'll see. We, we probably, hopefully, we get to have a, a few uh, anti thug fights where we see what Ohm is uh, dreaming up over there. Um, oh my gosh, everything is under siege from Vanarus. I didn't even see some of this stuff down here. Not a very ha uh, happy time. I, You know, if you have mages in here, you probably, you know, like, research is important. But I think you this is the thing when you're fighting elves. You just have to assume they're going to attack you every turn with something low commitment. So, like, it reminds me, this reminds me a little bit, like, of the pressure I was getting when I was fighting Nazca uh, as Bandarlog. And, like, the birds just be everywhere. And it sucks, because you have to waste a ton of mage turns just assuming, you know, an elf's going to pop out of your rice bowl and bonk you on the head. And you end up wasting a ton of turns, because you basically are like, I'm going to patrol every fort every turn with, like, enough mages to kill something stupid. You know, and you probably have to mix it up if you, every time he pings you with the scout, do something different the next turn. Um, so, yeah. Because now it's just like, God, every turn you get pinned into a fort, you, like, lose production. You might lose tracing income. Uh, you you don't, you know, you don't have any option anymore for PD at all. Like, so if he wants to go back and defend this, he's going to defend without any advantage of PD. Uh, and potentially there's a huge host of Morvarks moving in. Anyway. So that's basically uh, that. We've talked about... Um, the end Vanheim conflict. Uh, Bandar Log, mostly being left the hell alone. Which is hilarious. And uh, Ulm's army, I guess we didn't really talk about this too much. Moving south, looking like it's heading over this way to kill these three forts, is my guess. So uh, anyway, I think that's it. Uh, we'll call it here for the episode, so I will see you next time with uh, turn 44.